Guys, I speak to you with a theme, your capacity, your capacity to do it with God. God has given you a capacity. Capacity, my, and then he has enabled you to walk with him, to do life with God. What an awesome, awesome privilege that you can do life with him. Now you can do life with your fears. You can do life with your temptations. You can do life with a selfishness. You can do life very easily with a lot of rubbish. And it cannot take much more. You know, when you leave a child, he can hear, he can hear one naughty word and you don't have to teach him that naughty word again. Oh man, you just know that word. It didn't happen with you. And I saw that in my own life. Yeah. But it takes something more to do it with God. But through the Spirit, we have the capacity. Through the blood of Christ, we have the capacity to do life with Him. Something will walk with you. Either your past, but through the blood of Christ, cut it off. Your weakness, but in the weakness, God show Himself to be strong. Temptations, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Because the testing of your faith will produce the honor of God at the end of the day. Hello. In all things rejoice in the Lord. Do all as if unto the Lord. Give thanks in everything because you have the opportunity to do it as if unto the Lord. Not thank you Lord for this rubbish and thank you Lord for that rubbish. But thank you Lord that in the midst of that I have an opportunity to do life with you. Doesn't matter what I'm going through. Positive, negative. I can do life with my God. The first thing that God asked in the Garden of Eden is not, why did you do this? Why did you sin? Why did you not give yourself in obedience? The first question, where are you? Because you were supposed to do life with him. To be there where he is. We're going to make mistakes, but even in spite of our mistakes, God in his mercy, God in his grace, through his blood, give us the honor to walk with him, to do life with him. May we understand the privilege that we have. And when you do walk with him in worship, do walk with him through his word, do walk with him in prayer, and you will see the difference out there. But I can walk with religion in prayer. I can walk in such a way where in prayer I'm getting used to having a ritual, but God is not in it. That God is not in it. So I can teach myself how to do prayer without God. But even when you go to the Father in prayer, you cannot go if you don't go with the Spirit to the Father. So do life with God is even in approaching Him. You cannot approach Him without going with Him to go to Him. And that sounds freaky. But it's because you go to the Father, but only as the Holy Spirit guides you. Because flesh cannot stand before God. He's a consuming fire. But through the opening, through the blood... I have boldness to come before the throne. But I don't know how to do it without the Spirit. If the Spirit doesn't guide me. So what an awesome privilege you have. What an awesome privilege I have. That I can do it with Him. Even as I enter in prayer. Enter in worship. Go into the valley. Be on the mountain. But with, 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 with Him. Hallelujah. We're looking at the life of Daniel. There's four. Four that I want you to write down. Stand, serve, sow, see. Everybody say stand, stand. serve, serve. sow, sow, see. Now later we can go into detail with a lot of things. Even in the first session we didn't get out of it, uh, into that uh, in the Afrikaans service. About the four living creatures about the four facets that Jesus grew in. He grew how to 
stand, how to serve, how to sow, how to see. As we see in Luke 2 verse 52, and Jesus grew in stature, wisdom, favor with God, favor with man. That's the four facet Jesus grew in. And if you're going to do life with him, you better grow in what he grew in when he was here on earth. These four facets. Hey? Stature is to stand. Hello? As a leader. Grew in wisdom. That's so that you will, under, in wisdom, know how to serve. How to serve the Lord your God. Practically. Wisdom is to make everything Practical. I can serve the Lord, not through the religion, not through performance, but through the wisdom of God, I'm a servant. Wisdom will make all this, may will make the word, will make your relationship practical. Wisdom will protect you against the curse of slavery, but to be a servant. Amen. And then favor with God, favor with man, favor with man, so that as a man, as you, you will give your life as a seed. He came as a man, but he gave his life as a seed. That as you are crucified with Christ, died with him, buried with him, raised with him, it's like you give your life as a seed. Amen. So your life. Want to follow him? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Not destroy yourself. Yeah. If you want to follow a religion, then you will destroy yourself. But if you want to follow him, you will deny yourself, but you will find yourself. Deny yourself, but take up your cross. Not the cross of religion, the cross of your identity, of who you are through the cross. And then you can follow him. And people will recognize you as a follower of Christ, not a follower of religion. God will help us. Amen. And the last one, see. Favor with God. If you have favor with God, you will see what he sees. You will have his perspective in every situation. You will have an accuracy. You will have a sensitivity in the spirit. You will understand to where he is. It's not like just knowing his will. But seeing it the way that he sees it. Because you see through his heart. Your heart and his heart. You have the same heart. Are you with me? So you, my brother and my sister, you need to stand to serve, to sow, to see. If that I gave it you all the S's so that you can remember it. The object lesson. Okay. We're talking about the life of David. Awesome person in the sense of um, I stand eight. Who same is that? Not just standing out, it's uh, something more. But there's this quality in this man. And in, he, in him and his friends, that he would, was able just to stand. He was just able to stand when the world would tell you, it's time to bow. There's only one that will stand, it's the church of Christ. And the world, it will get more crazy out there. It will get more crazy out there. And the unfairness of things will become more and more and more. The ridiculousness of things will it will just grow more and more and more. How pathetic that you, everybody must bow before that statue. And say that is now everything. But when everything must go in a certain direction, God is wanting you to stand out. So when everything must bow, he has the faith that you will stand. You will stand. You will stand. When he's talking about Ephesians 6, 11 and 13, it says... Put on the armor of God so that you will be able to stand. But then there's a process of putting on and, and practicing to stand so that at the end of the day you will stand. Put on the armor of God so that you are able to stand so that at the end of the day you will stand. That sounds freaky. But the first one has to do with the struggle, the fight to stand. And at the end of the day so that you have stature. So that you have stature. So that you're a man with stature. So that at the end of the day you have stature. Everybody here. So that when you come into a place, there's less fight and more just authority walking in. The more you put on the armor of God, that's all about the word of God. The more you find yourself in who he is, in who he is. Christ in you, you in Christ. Christ in you, you in Christ through the word. The more that happens, the more there's a... A situation of less fight and just victory is walking in when you walk in. 
because you're living in victory. You are more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror before the time. Because you are dealing with a battle in yourself. Hello? Dealing with the flesh. Get into that place, my brother and my sister. So Daniel had to deal with it before the time. So that at the end of the day, he stood with stature in front of one, two, three, four kings. Most ridiculous guys. Worldly kings. But he could tell them. He could with boldness just tell them, the writing of the world has to do with you. And this is what's going to happen with you. So, 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 so. Oh, that other dream has to do with you. You are taking the glory for yourself. You will become like an animal and you will eat the grass. For not one day, for quite a while. That's what will happen with you. <laughs> Some boldness. Understand? This is the man that says, if you, type, if you cannot uh, explain this and this and this, you will be slaughtered, you will be killed. Oh, I must be careful what I say to the king. You know, I say to the king, king, you will become an animal <laughs> because you don't give God the glory. Oh man, I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm talking about having the stature to say what God is saying. I'm not talking about taking the position in the name of a demon of religion to condemn everybody and curse everybody with religion, pointing the finger. Uh -uh. This was a, a extraordinary, that's the word, extraordinary man. And God wants to raise up his, his church like a Daniel type of stature that he wants to give you. So that when there's the roaring of the lions, you are willing to face the lions. Why? Because you know the devil is walking around like a roaring lion. He isn't the lion. But like a roaring lion, seek to seek who he may devour. You allow the roar of the world, the roar of your flesh, the roar of your fears and your anxiety and your issues with people. You allow that roar, he will destroy you. It's not the people, but that thing will destroy you because you choose to acknowledge and respect the roar of one that is like a lion, but there's only one that is the lion, the lion of Judah, and the roar. We can say, roar, lion, roar, and we think it's the roar, oh, the roar. <clears throat> this is the roar. This is the roar. But if you know when the roaring of the lion, it's like the authority breaking through in creation, when the lion out there is roaring. When you understand the authority of the roar of the word, when you accept that and understand that everything submits and everything is arrested by the word of God. Through the word, it came into being. Through the word, it will be destroyed. Through the word, a new heaven and earth will be created. But do you know the roar of the Lion of Judah? If you don't know, if you cannot hear the roar of the Lion of Judah through these, this, these words... The enemy can come like a roaring lion and you will just fight the roaring, the one that comes like, like, like a lion. And you will have to fight that roar of that thing that is like a lion. All the way. You must have the fight and you will have the fight. Daniel had no fight with those lions. No fight. Hello? His friends knew the fire. The fire of God, that they had respect for their God in such a way. And more and more, my brother, my sister, yeah, we are going in the end time. We will, there will not be a rapture. And we will talk another time about that. Please don't take offense about that. But we are going through. Why? There will be wars, rumors of wars. There will be this. There will be famine. There will be shaking. The heaven and earth will be shaken. All those stuff will happen. But not the end is not there. The end is not yet there. And then the gospel will be preached to all the nations. By who? By who if the church is gone? If we have the ministry of reconciliation, if God entrusted the whole ministry to us of reconciliation, that we must take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And then later God says, after giving us the greatest command, the commission, sorry, greatest command is love, greatest commission, go therefore make disciples of all the nations. If we have 
been commissioned by God in that. And the, the word says that once they said, now the gospel to all the nations will be preached. And then the end will come. Who's going to preach all the gospel to all the nations? Oh yeah, there's, there's some preaching there, it seems to me. Yes. Hello? If the church is gone, who's going to preach? The rocks must cry out. No. But in that time, there will be a church like Daniel and his friends with a with a, that will stand out. A re resilience. Resilience is the other word. That's a freaky word. It's near Chochani. Resilience that, that distinguishes them from all the rest. Oh, and pray for protection will not be to be to pray against physical death because the church will rise in such a way that Christ will be life and die will be gain. So so Let's pray against that what will be gain. No. It's not to survive. It's to do life with God. Do life with God this side. And do life with God that side. Beyond death as just a passing through. Beyond the place of gain. So what will protection be? Psalm 91. What will be protection... What does it mean? He says, God, protect me against myself. Protect me against the destroyer that can destroy the life that I can have with you. Yes, in the context of what we have here, we need wisdom so that we are not foolish in what we do with our physical lives. And we can pray, we can bring it before God. And sometimes, yes, it will mean in a physical protection, but more and more and more and more in the end time, everybody will understand. I'm here with purpose. And protect me against my flesh that will take me away from my purpose here on earth. From my calling. First of all to walk with him. But then to do with him that what he has called me to do. Amen. Oh, As for a church that will grow up. That will become mature. So that you will stand. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Okay. Right. Give thanks in all circumstance. Okay, Lord. Why? Because what you do, you're going to do it as if unto the Lord. I will stand. I will not compromise. And if it means I must go through the fire so that they will see you, Lord, and be shocked and that the nations will see who is walking with the church that just will not bow. Even if the guys that must throw them in the fire, even if they must be destroyed, but the guys, who's walking with them? And people will recognize the one walking with you. If you are willing to walk through the fire. If you are willing to say, I want the world to know. I want the world to know. King, we want you to know. It's very important for us that you must know. That even if our God will not protect us, still we will not bow. Still we will not bow. Still we will honor you and you, uh, you who are the Lord. Not you, the King. We want you to know. Even if we benefit nothing, even if our God don't even protect us, we will not bow. That is the quality, the resilience. That is the quality, the integrity, the beauty of the church more and more and more in the end time. Where it will be nothing about themselves, but all about his honor. May God help you, help me. And in that place, the nations will stand amazed and they will say, there's no other God than their God. And that's part of how the nation's going to come in. Is how they will see the resilience, the quality, the excellence in the church of Christ. Where they doesn't, it, it's not about, it's not about them. It's about this, this, this God that they serve. They came out and there was nothing wrong. The fire didn't touch them. The destruction from the world cannot do that against you when you stand in the fear of God when it's all about Him. Stand, to stand, to stand. 1 Corinthians 15, can we quickly do that one? You write it down somewhere. 
or you mark it in your Bible or on your phone. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. That is not because you are stubborn. I'm not talking about stubbornness. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always. Everybody say always. always. Now say like always. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You, have, you are doing something that has eternal value. You're doing something that has eternal value. Make sure you are firm in the work of the Lord. But in doing, you're, in giving yourself full out for the work of the Lord, in that place, stand firm, let nothing move you. Stand firm, let nothing move you. Elijah, you're doing a powerful, powerful work of the Lord. Fire from heaven and all the Baal prophets must be slaughtered and will be slaughtered and be killed. And then afterwards, stand strong in the work of the Lord. You find yourself in a place where you feel tired. And Elijah, under the, under bush, under the besom bush, that's the besom bush in Engels, under that bush, yeah, the lays and. And God is not confused, but God asking, what are you doing here? <laughs> you, 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 ever, you ever heard that before? Not just only when you were naughty and lazy, and your mom and your dad or teacher or pastor asking, what are you doing here? You never heard that question in your life. Okay, I heard it before. And um, what are you doing here? Not to condemn you, but reevaluate. what are you doing? What are you doing here? And when Elijah was open to the Spirit, when he was tired, when you are tired, when I'm tired, I can be so, so open to what the enemy says. But when you are tired, if you can be open to what the Spirit says, it was the introduction to the next level for Elijah's ministry. To go and find Elijah for the double anointing, for succession, for legacy, for transfer into a prophet that has a double amount of miracles recorded in the Bible than Elijah. Next phase of, if you're, of your ministry, if you're in a place of tiredness, but you still give yourself from your spirit for the work to the work of the Lord. To the work of the Lord. Why? So you hear what he is saying. But when we are tired, we can walk in love so much more. No. When I'm tired, there's when the frustration, the irritation, the this. I'm tired because I had to do this alone. I'm tired because I had to do his work. I'm tired because the, I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot recognize this, what I'm saying, or identify with that. But as long as you know it, for other people. Hello. But when you are tired, my brother, my sister, and you've done what you had to do, and you feel, but where, where's the rest? Elijah said, I'm the only prophet left. God says, I have a lot of others still there, out there. You are wrong. This man was so prophetically accurate. And when he became tired, he thought, I'm the, uh, I'm the only one left. Mm -mm. Not at all. God has his people in different places there. You remember, you're always part of a body. It's not you and you alone. Are you with me? But God will help you. God will help you in that. But you must stand strong. You must do the fight. Get into the word. Get the word over you, around you, in you. The, way, the, the armor of God so that you walk with stature. Like Daniel and his friends. And so, when they said nobody is allowed to pray. Nobody is allowed to pray. And if you pray to, all the, uh, to, to any other God. We're going to kill you. You'll be thrown to the lions. God, help, help me, help me. Lord, okay, you understand why I will not open the, the windows when I will be praying now. Me, Daniel. No, no, no. Immediately, what did Daniel do? He went into his house and he opened the windows and he prayed for everybody to see. Huh. The moment when he heard that, if you do that, you'll be thrown into the lion's den. What's the first thing he went? He, he ran to his house and he opened the windows. And he prayed. You were called to stand out. You were called to stand out. That even your prayer will be a testimony. Amen. 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 Number two, serve. You will stand. You will serve. Serve. 
Colossians 3, 23 and 24, do everything, everything, everything as if unto the Lord. Do everything as if unto the Lord. Okay, how, why must you know that? Because there's sometimes that you would not want to do it, because they don't help you, because that one is ungrateful, because they tuned you, they just said, shut up and do this, finish, and walk around. How can that man speak to me like that? You know? And in, in unfairness, how it was said, and, and it's unfair that I must take that load. And that lazy other guys, that, those lazy guys, they're not doing it. Oh, God is giving you opportunity. Oh, I'm so glad God gave me such an opportunity this week. What was the opportunity? He gave me an opportunity to do my work as if unto the Lord, unto Him, because People did this, they did that, we talked behind my back, they, they did all these nasty stuff. They didn't say thank you, they were ungrateful, they, they were lazy, they, 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 they did all these stuff. So, so I'm grateful that God gave me an opportunity to purify my heart so that what I do, I will do it as if unto Him. If everybody is just nice to me and give me the praise and give me a thank you and encourage me and appreciate me and how I do it and what I do it, okay, wonderful. But you are never going to grow and make sure that you are doing it as if unto the Lord. It's very easy to say. God said, the devil said to, to God, oh, it's easy to say, Job will serve you because you've put a heads around him, you've blessed him, he has all this stuff. <laughs> It's easy. Devil is laughing. He's serving you because he, he, it's easy. It's easy to serve you. It's easy to say he loves you because he, he, he got everything. And in the physical, maybe the church sometimes is going to feel, Whoosh. they have nothing, but they will be purified, 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 purified. In time for the church, what? To be purified as gold and in birth pangs for the birthing. In the birthing, they say in the birthing, the closer the lady gets into the birthing, the less other things, there's a focus not so much on the other things. So if the baby must come out, the baby must come out. It's not like... What are they doing in that town? How is my uncle and my auntie? Um, uh, there's no focus on other things now. The baby must come out. Hello? Uh, that's how I've heard. No personal experience. But what then am, am I saying? God will bring the church from the inside. Bring it for the... If you are in prayer and you're doing it with God, prayer is positioning. If you are positioned with God more and more in the end time, not positioning all the stuff is that must happen, all the unfairness and all the, all the shaking in heaven and earth. No, but focus from the inside in that what God wants to do. The beauty of God will be burst forth. The end time church made ready for the wedding of the Lamb, the bride of Christ. Being beautified by God. To become the bride of Christ, you are the church. The church is the called out ones to become the ones that are ushered in as the bride. The word church, ecclesia, means the called out ones out of darkness into his light and from the place of his light to be birthed as the bride of Christ. The most amazing present gift from the father to the son the church to be his bride and the gift from jesus to his father for you father to be your home jesus presenting the home of the father through the called out ones father presenting the church as the bride for his son awesome 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 Oh, what a day is going to be. Are you with me, man? Hello? You are still here? Get your life in order to do everything as if unto the Lord. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can take you away from his plan. John 12, 26. So that you will be a servant of the Lord. Servant of God. Whoa, who are you? If somebody loves me, he will serve me. And that servant, 
that is a true servant. Where I am, my servant will also be. Where I am, my servant will also be. So even if it's in the fire, that people must be shocked with, who's the one walking with you? There is somebody. There is somebody walking with you. And it's not selfishness. It's not flesh. It's not your image. It's not your, your charisma. It's not your personality. It's not, it's not your capacity. It's not your intellect. It's your, not your sharpness. There's something more walking with you. What is it? And they don't understand. And you have the opportunity. It's my God. It's my God. May that be your life, because that's going to be the life of the end time church. Hello, Matthew 6, 24, serve. You can only serve one master, Matthew 6, 24. You cannot serve mammon and God. Why, how do we serve? Oh, because we are greedy. No, 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 no. If I live and I'm stressed out about the finances, why? Because... For in some reason, for some way, I'm working so that I can have a salary at the end of the month. No. So that I can have a life. No, that's rubbish. No. Money must be your servant to work in your calling how to glorify God. So you get a salary, but God's provision is so much more than just a salary. Thank God for your salary. Thank God for the provision in your life. But money is the servant so that you will know how to honor him with your calling. Don't work for money. Don't go with a vision so that you can make certain profit unless you know I'm putting the servant in line for the purposes that God has for my life. And the servant that I'm putting in line is with all these opportunities, all these visions, this business, these finances that, are, that will come in. You're speaking to Mammon as your servant. To serve you in the purposes of God. But there's only one God. And the other one is the slave. The one is the God, one is the slave. Decide. But if money is the God, then the slave must be your prayer. And so that at the end of the day, I commit my ways unto the Lord. So that he gives me the desires of my heart. Seek the kingdom and the rest will follow. <laughs> follow the shepherd and the goodness and the mercy will follow me. Ah, we never say it like that. We don't necessarily pray like that, but in our focus. And that focus will be when you, what that you will see in what could be a fear or anxiety and the stress. Because it's natural, man, when we have some challenges financially even, that the fear, anxiety, the stress, those things can come. But when those things come, say, hey, hey, for food sack, go, in Jesus' name. English guys, they don't have a good word for food sack. <laughs> I don't know what it is in English. <laughs> But to go in Jesus' name. Because I see, no, 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 sorry. I will not stress about the servant. You will come in line for what God has for my, 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 my life. But I will not serve money. Easy to say, but and it's a battle to get through this, but God wants to bring his church and God wants to bring you into that place. We're going to get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Go, amen. Number three, so, sowing, Matthew 13, 24, 37 to 39. We know the, the parable of the sower, and the word is the seed. Your heart is either the, the rocky field with all the other rubbish in it, and you have a struggle in yourself, or all the thorns and the thistles and all those stuffies in there, and the rubbish, and all oh, is superficial. You can hear the word, but it doesn't touch you. It doesn't touch you at all. More and more, you learn how to have your heart just as a road. When you sit here today, when you read Bible tonight, when you, when you pray, when you're supposed to make a decision in faith, then uh, um, you can hear the word, but it doesn't really touch you. You receive it, but it doesn't really make an impact on you. You are training your heart how to be just this road, where this, this place where the birds can come and just pick up the food, and the food is, when the word is put in your heart, but it doesn't touch you. You are feeding the enemy. Well, if you must feed the enemy, that's your choice. By receiving the word, but the enemy can come like the bird and pick up the seed. Let your life, your heart, not be a plate for the enemy to feed at. Are you with me? You're still here? But, but, but this seed is about your life. This other parable from Matthew 13 has to do with you as a seed. It's talking about a farmer that's sowing the good seed, and in the night, 
The enemy come and sow bad seeds. That's all the thorns and the thistles. That you find the good people and the bad people based on the grace of God, not based on performance. But there's people, and then one day, no, the, these guys will not be plucked out, but one day, the harvest that's good will be for the Father, the rest will be burned away. That's the people that are destined to hell, the people that are part of his kingdom. And But then God sowing your life as a seed, you, your life must bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. How, how you live by faith through the word. Amen. Like the word will work as a seed. Find yourself in the seed. Find the seed in you. Christ in you, you in Christ. Christ the incorruptible seed. Are you with me? You are part of the incorruptible seed, Jesus Christ. And the incorruptible seed is in you. That's why you sow your life as a seed into a situation but some we work ourselves into death never never any never anymore in jesus name finish with that people they they disappear in their work disappear in despair disappear in negativity disappear in the in the rat race with all the other rats and all those stuff ah uh -uh. you will not disappear deny yourself you will find yourself if you lose yourself in him, you will find yourself in him. Life, are you with me? Deny yourself and the life that is hidden in Christ, that awesome life you can find in Christ. It will be revealed through his spirit to you. Serve. Everybody say stand. Yes. Serve. Yes. Okay, the third one. So, well, we've been there already. So the first point, sorry. The second one in John 12. 24 and 1 Peter 1 23. Oh, okay. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave it. Is that okay? No, don't rejoice. Can we read through that tonight? Is that okay? We're going to the word C, spiritual accuracy. Man, that this. First of all, let me just put that Daniel and his friends, it was an honor to sow their lives, even if they must sow their lives in death. They were willing to sow their lives. But then also to see this man had this capacity. You know, Jesus spoke about the end time, what will happen for the disciples to see and for us to see. And then you find John, and he was taken in the spirit and saw a lot of things about the end time. But that Old Testament, far before this time, there was this man. And man, oh man, <laughs> God revealed some things to him, Daniel, right through the coming of Christ as through Mary, death, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the everything, far beyond the New Testament church into the end time. This Daniel could see. He had this capacity to be in the spirit with God, in the seeing. Do life with God in the working, in the standing in the seeing into the future because God wants to share his heart with you not so that you know everything so that you can feel more in control and feel safe <laughs> not because he needs to explain to you certain things no he doesn't need to explain to you anything but he wants to do life with you he wants to share his heart with you he wants you to be excited about the future he wants you to know where he is going he wants to commune with you and into that place of sharing his heart with you and you hearing his heart. It's not so that you can be in control and understand the future. It's that you can do it together. You have this capacity to do life with him. You have this capacity to sit with God and God sharing his heart and his excitement about the future of Ukraine, the future of Egypt, the future of South Africa, the future of Swaziland. The f he wants to do it because he's your father. He wants to walk with you. He wants to do life with you. But this man had that capacity. But the in time church more and more will walk into this capacity like this Daniel had. Resilience and extraordinary capacity and, and excellence in his life. But it wasn't just, I trust God to see more. No, 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 no. There's a life 
of how to stand with God, how to serve, how to sow your, yourself as a seed. And an honor to sow yourself as a seed. But in the right way. Because tomorrow you can do what is expected of you. But you're destroying your life because you just do. You, you know, I will choose to do it the right way. I, I must do it and so I will do it. And I will go to the work and I will do what is expected of me. What a waste of a life. That is destroying through a, 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 being a servant as a, in, in the curse of slavery. But when you do what you do tomorrow as an honor, because you can do it as if unto the Lord, you do it as if unto the Lord, you're sowing as if unto the Lord, you can expect a harvest. You can expect a harvest. Eternal harvest. That the impact of your prayers, your faith, your gen the generations will see it. Nations will see it. People will see it. Hello? So many prayer warriors, so many prayer warriors, so many prayer warriors that don't, people don't know about men. Guys that led Billy Graham to the Lord and this man to the Lord and prayed for that one, this grandma prayed for that mother. You don't know about them. You don't know about them. But because of they have a legacy and they found the legacy in what happened with their children, their grandchildren even, and how they stood up for Christ and had this impact, had this major a uh, business CEO with a business of how many billions or whatever, but they did it in the name of the Lord and, and it served the kingdom purposes. But what happened? That was part of legacy inheritance of a mother and a grandmother and a father that stood by faith, speaking the word, faithfully walking before the Lord. Nobody knows anything about them. The Naomi. Hello? The Mordecai. That birthed forth the Esthers. And the roof, and these guys. Oh man, may God help you. May God help me that we have, that we grow in maturity to become selfless in how we stand with stature before the Lord. Amen. I'm excited, even in the vision of that God has given Kriari long before we started with Kriari, that, that prophets in different places will come and say there will be impact in this way. Nations will be set alight, continents will be set alight. This will happen, that will happen, that will happen. I think, God, how on earth will that happen? But you know, spiritual sons, people that went from this place, people that came from more than 30 nations, what an honor. May they have impact where they are in that networks, in those nations where they are. May they be glorifying God and God alone. Amen. So stand strong here in that what God has put in our midst. Let it be so. See, 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 Habakkuk 2.1. Oh, when? See. When chapter 1, when Habakkuk, remember? Crying out. For how long? I'm praying and nothing is happening. I'm screaming out. I'm crying out to you and you do nothing, Lord. What a tantrum. But then he doesn't stay in his tantrum. He's not making, doesn't make his tantrum his home. He doesn't uh, start to have a relationship with his tantrum and in his experiences of prayers that does not work, of crying out to the Lord and nothing changes. He decides to walk away from that, that even this reality, no, I will not relate to that. I will stand on my watchtower. That's a sentence of victory. That's a sentence of stature. Hello? And when I choose to stand in that stature, how must I serve the nation? How will I sow my life as a seed then? And I will see what he is saying. I will stand on my watchtower. I will stand and keep on standing to see what he is saying. So that I have this capacity to walk with him. He make me on my feet like the What's a good? Instead, what? That's a good. Like the deer, up to on the mountain, stand there on my heights. He makes me that I will rejoice. Doesn't matter what. If there's any cows, if there's any 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 harvest, if there's nothing, still, I will hold on to him. No, still I will rejoice. Still I have the capacity for joy. Still I have this capacity to have fulfillment and enjoy life with him. He makes me. Yeah. You make me rejoice. <laughs> Amen. Amen.
But to get into that place where you have the capacity to do life with God, even there's no harvest, even there's no change of circumstance, you can do life with Him because you can see what He is seeing. And you can see what He is saying. This can let you see Him. If you understand how to get into that. And hear the roar of the Lion of Judah through His word. God, come and change our lives. God, I pray for every man, woman in this place that the excellence that you've placed in their spirit will come forth. That by your grace, through your grace, through your blood, we will make that decision to walk into what you have for us. Lord, please, God, we need you. Because we look at our lives and we see failures, we see disappointments, we see things, we, we, we are strong, we, we see things which we've built foolishly in what we said and what we did and how we positioned ourselves in relationships. And, but thank you, Father, that through your blood tomorrow is a new opportunity. That through your blood it's a new opportunity tomorrow. Help us to see that opportunity, God. That we will not stay in a place of a spiritual tantrum, Lord, of praying a lot of things, and we stopped praying certain things that we prayed in the past. God, forgive us for that. Forgive us for that. But God, help us to be faithful in prayer as we come with the Holy Spirit in prayer. Guide us, Holy Spirit, what to pray, how to worship in spirit and truth, how to relate accurately, how to understand respect and protocol in the presence of our Father. Teach us that, Lord. Help us to hear the roar of the line of Judah through his word. As we choose to honor, honor the final say, the final authority of your word. And that we will embrace the final authority of your word. As the roar of the line of Judah through our lives. Let it be so in Jesus' name as you touch every man, woman in this place. Open the eyes of their heart to see. Help them to sow their lives, not in performance, not in religion. But God, that there will be a harvest, 30, 60, 100 fold, through a quality life of every man, woman in this place. To serve unto the Lord with no, no, no curse of a yoke of slavery. But an honor to do it as if unto the Lord. Thank you that we can have stature, Lord. Stature to proclaim your name. That the house will stand in the midst of a storm because the nations will be amazed at their foundation. The revelation of who you are. Make us those wise builders, Lord. We trust you. Have mercy on your church in the nations, Lord. For foolish building. But God, open our eyes that the church in the nations, that we will build through the wisdom of God. Protect our building through your wisdom that we will build on the foundation of who you are, on this solid rock, the solid foundation, the unchangeableness of your word, the unchangeableness of who you are yesterday, today, forever the same. Thank you for that honor that we have, that privilege to build a life with, with, with you. And by your grace that you give every man, woman in this place that capacity. So we pray in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Let it be so, man.